Hey, this is Joe, Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the bench. First off, a big thank you to everybody who purchased components out of my Reverb store. I sold a lot of what I had available. There's still some stuff left over. Uh, but yeah, I hope it inspires you all to create something fun and unique. If you're interested, there's still some germanium transistor lots left over. I'm also gonna be listing different components over time. So feel free to stop back and see if there's anything you're interested in. So yeah, thank you to everybody who, uh, who bought some stuff. While I was going through all the components that I collected over the years, I was reminded of these enclosures that I got from that prescription electronics lot. And I thought it would be a cool project for today to just build up this uh, COB enclosure. It is an unused enclosure, as you can see. It's got sort of a mint green powder coat with a blue silk screen. It was probably rejected because there's some like splotches from the silk screen process, but that's fine with me. It does need to be drilled. I went and bought the Obscura PCB from Ion FX. This is a uh, prescription electronics COB project. We can take a look at the info here. Uh, it's based on the Fox Tone Machine. It has a blend control that sort of goes around the octave effect. They also, uh, Ion FX incorporated a uh, octave disabling switch that lets you take out the octave effect. We can look at the schematic here. Uh, so this is a schematic drawn by Ion FX. If you're interested in building your own COB, go check out the Obscura PCB from Ion FX. Thank you, Ion, for doing the schematic. Uh, so yeah, pretty clearly a Fox Tone machine. You can see here a tap is sort of taken off this junction here and comes over to a blend potentiometer and then straight out to the volume. So this is your clean octave coming out, right? This is your clean blend coming out and here's your octave coming through the fuzz circuit. And then the switch is right here. The switch is gonna be an on off on. So it'll have three positions where uh, for the on or on, you're either connecting two to one or two to three, and then the off is connecting neither. So for three, that'll be your standard octave effect. So this, these two diodes are doing, you're doing a phase split across this transistor here. So you'll have inverse phase coming out of the collector and in phase signal coming out of the emitter. Those get rectified by the diodes and then recombine for an, an octave up effect. So when two to three is connected, your octave is on. When two to one is connected, you're, by, you're disconnecting the lower side, the in phase signal. So you just have the out of phase signal going through. Actually for two to one, what's, you're actually jumping around the D2 here. So you're taking that diode out of the circuit. And then when two is disconnected, then you are going in series with the uh, diode here, but the octave is still disconnected. So yeah, we'll build up this PCB here. And at the end, we'll do a listening test. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around.
All right, so unfortunately I forgot to hit record and I didn't realize it. So we've kind of fast forward to it being actually built. Unfortunately, I made some mistakes that I wish I had caught on camera because uh, everybody makes mistakes and I like showing mine, but I can at least tell you about them. The, uh, one of the frustrating things that it took me a couple tries, unfortunately, to realize is that the layout here, as you would expect, uh, because the board is made by INFX and the closure is made by Prescription Electronics, completely separate from each other, is that the layout of the knobs doesn't match. The volume knob is correct, the volume is there, volume is there, but the octave and the blend are switched. Octave or blend is here up in the uh, top right corner and octave sort of central, whereas on the board, octave is in the top right corner or top left from this angle and blend is in the center. I did accidentally twice do the, the wrong connection. So I made connections, it was wrong, I fixed it and it was wrong again and I put it back because the original was correct. It's frustrating when that happens, I did ponder uh, for an embarrassing long time about how hard it had to throw this pedal through the window to break it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that I still don't know the answer to that. Uh, and you just, you know, when that stuff happens, you just got to push through and, and, and fix it. So anyway, we're here now. The pedal is built. I've got four 3904s as the circuit calls for in the transistor positions. Our two diodes in here. These are the rectification diodes for the octave effect. I've got the nine volt battery installed exterior nut DC jack that has the battery switch. So when the input jack is disconnected, no power, as you can see there, if we connect a input jack, excuse me, connect the plug to the input jack, then we will be able to turn on the circuit like so. so at least we know the battery's working. The other mistake I made was sort of in the process of doing that removal twice of the blend control. The uh, PCB was damaged on the other side, has a lot of heat. So I did add in a, little, a little jumper up here to the volume pot where it, uh, or over here to the volume pot where it connects in the circuit. So that's rock solid now. Unfortunately, just a byproduct of having to fix a mistake twice. The extra holes for the octo switch here had to be drilled. I tried to make it nice and central in a way that looked aesthetically pleasing and similar to what I think Jack would have done. There were versions of other pedals in this sort of prescription electronics layout that had a fourth knob up here. I squeezed it in about as tight as I could to the DC jack here. I also installed the LED because it was part of the ion board and I figured I might as well just put it in there. The PCB is floating on top of the blend knob potentiometer, which is a, a PCB mount potentiometer. And then I just ran wires to the solder lug potentiometers here. So it's sitting on that lugs and then sort of just resting on the corners of the two pots here. I'm not concerned about that at all. It's pretty solid. So that is the build here. Let's go ahead and hook it up to the amplifier and see how it sounds. All right, we got the Prescription Electronics COB slash Ion FX Obscura clone build here ready for a listening test. For a guitar, I have a Telecaster. I'm gonna be switching between a humbucker in the bridge and a single coil in the neck. The amp is a one by 12 sort of modded basement. The microphone's an SM57 pointed pretty much right at the cone. This is the clean sound. clean-ish. Let's start with just a kind of full-on octave sound so you can hear what that is. This is going to be the bridge pickup. Switch to the neck pickup. So on this pedal, the blend and the octave controls are switched. So top right is actually the octave and the uh, center one here is the blend. So you can hear it's, it's rolling in more of that clean sound. It's a little woofy because it's a neck pickup. We'll go back to the bridge. Okay. 
All right, we'll try the center position. This is the off position. So this is, this is gonna be with the octave out because we're disconnecting the second half of that rectification circuit. But the, uh, one of the rectification diodes is still gonna be in series. <laughs> switch over to the right position which will be with the series rectification diode out and octave off. I definitely like it with the octave. It's pretty woofy from my ears right here without uh, the rectification, the octave going on. Prescription electronics, they pull the tone control out that you normally have on the Fox machine, uh, the tone machine. So uh, let's go back to the octave sound and we'll hear a little bit with that second octave mixed back in. Yeah, so you can hear there's a lot of texture in there for sure. Uh, a lot of different sounds. There's not a huge difference between the two off, like the two off the, the offsetting and the right setting where either the two non-octave settings essentially. Um, theoretically that series diode should add a little bit of distortion, crossover distortion. That's what's pointed out in the INFX um, documentation. I'm not hearing too much of it to be honest, but, but yeah, it is an interesting pedal. Definitely something uh, that I think I could see using for a solo section, you kick that on, you have your extra octo control, and then you can dial it back in how much you want that to affect your original circuit or your original sound with the clean blend. I'm sure bassists also would be fine with this pedal, anything with a clean blend so they can keep their 
their thump in there that distortion pedals tend to roll off. So yeah, interesting pedal. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment below. If you uh, enjoyed the video, I appreciate you hitting the like button. I'm Joe from Grand Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.